In this video, we'll be talking about a topic called stored procedures, which are ways of basically recording many different instructions that you want a particular database to follow. And instead of just always specifying that with, here is this sequence of 40 queries, do all of this. Instead, you basically store those queries, you store the commands inside the database with a nice little function so that you can call that procedure. You can call that method whenever you want to, instead of having to recreate those queries from scratch. So you can think of a stored procedure as kind of a type of function. It's not technically a function. Functions are something that we'll talk about a little bit later. But a stored procedure is like a function that's written in SQL, and is the actual instructions are stored within the database. They're primarily used to store logic and protocols for making changes to the database. So instead of writing a query that will like add a student, and when, how do you add a student? Well, you add it to the student's database, and then you make an entry for them in the grades table, and then you send an email to their parents saying congratulations. Um, instead of having those as a bunch of queries, you instead lump them all together into one stored procedure that you can call safely from one place and it'll make all the necessary changes you need. SQLite is a bit of a bare bones database management system. It doesn't actually have stored procedures because in general, these sorts of things are much more useful for databases that are operating on separate processes or separate servers from the client. And so communication is a lot more expensive with databases more often than for SQLite, which is just a file stored somewhere on your computer. There, there, there isn't this kind of communication lag and a lot of the benefits from stored procedures don't actually matter for those circumstances. And so in SQLite's case, the client, you know, the, pr the program can interact directly with the database because it's running just right next to the file. So instead, I'm going to be demonstrating how stored procedures work with MySQL. OK, so here's an example. I'm going to just go through the syntax of a stored procedure, and we'll talk about how they're used in a little bit. So the first line is this delimiter line, which basically says, what is the end of a statement? Now, normally the end of a statement is a semicolon, right? You say, you say select star from table semicolon. And that semicolon means I'm done with this statement. Do not try to merge it on to the next query. However, it's really important that you, in MySQL, that you actually specify an alternative delimiter for the purpose of um, defining a stored procedure because otherwise the first semicolon you run into will try to end the stored procedure, which is not what you want. And then the next line is you say create procedure and you give the procedure's name. So for instance, let's say I'm trying to do some sort of tracking and I say add now at the current time to the log and this stored procedure doesn't take any arguments. I just have open close parentheses. And now I have the body of my procedure. I have begin and then all the SQL um, statements that need to be run here. I'm just adding a particular, the current time into the table called log. And then I say end. And now you have these two slashes. Those two slashes are just because those are the symbol that I said will denote the end of the stored procedure. When you see those two slashes, you know you're done with the stored procedure. And then the last thing I do is I set the delimiter back to a semicolon, back to what it normally is, so that future um, uh, queries can be treated with the semicolon just like normal. All right. So we'll talk. Oh, and, and, and the last thing I should mention is the fact that, OK, so up above is how you define a stored procedure. How do you actually use it? Well, somewhere else in your code, you say call. And call is a keyword just like delimiter, create, pr uh, procedure, begin, and end. Call just says, run this stored procedure with these arguments, which in this case, there aren't any. All right, so that's what a stored procedure looks like. Obviously, there can be a lot more SQL queries between the begin and the end. It can involve calling other stored procedures and things like that. Um, we won't really be getting too much into that because that's really not the interesting thing that stored procedures can do. Um, the other thing that I need to talk about is the idea of in SQL, you can actually have variables. So the way that you have variables that you store values in is you say declare the variable name, the data type, default, and a default value. And so the just like in many other languages, you're required to declare your variables before you use them. So just like in C++, you say int x. Well, this is like a much longer version of that same thing. Um, and the other thing is you can have this optional default clause to say, hey, if I don't set the variable later, this should be its starting value. And the way that you set a variable is you say set the variable's name equals a particular value. Uh, pretty simple enough. 
And so how can you set a variable? Here is one way. If you just know what the value is, you just use this set line. The other and more interesting way to set variables is you can use select statements to fill them in. You could say select something into variable name from table. And so this into keyword basically says, put the results that you would have returned to the user, returned to the client, stick it in this variable instead. And so these variables are actually a little bit more complicated than at first they may seem. They're not just simple primitive values. They can hold anything that a select statement can return. So they can hold basically tables with rows and columns um, all in a particular variable. The other thing to note is that session variables, these are variables that are meant to last for the entire time that a connection to a, a, a database is established. So most of the time, variables only last for a very short time, only last for as long as the stored procedure they're defined within exists. But if you need to have basically global variables, you need to have variables that will persist the entire time you have a connection to the database, you stick a little at sign in front of it to basically say, keep this thing around until I disconnect. So let's show you an example of a stored procedure that uses a variable. So I'm going to start with by saying, hey, declare a variable called total projects. It's of type int, and it defaults to 0. And then I can fill that by actually writing a query that looks at my database and sticks the necessary information in it. So I say select count star into total products from products. This gives me how many rows, or really how many products there are in my table. Another way that I could have filled this variable is I could have just said set total products equal to, I don't know, 123 if I knew the particular number that I wanted to stick in total products to begin with. All right, so right now we've been talking about stored procedures that don't have any arguments. I just said in the previous example, open close parentheses when I was defining the stored procedure. A stored procedure that doesn't take any arguments isn't particularly smart. It has to do the exact same thing every time, which sometimes is useful, but it's more often being able to pass variables in or get data out makes them a lot more useful. And unfortunately, the way that stored procedures do things with um, their arguments is kind of messy. And so you actually have to pass in arguments to this for both input and output. So the default mode that use parameters is called the in mode. What the thing, um, the way that this works is you basically supply a variable that's already filled in with information, either using default or set or the select into um, pattern. And the procedure then works on a copy of that data and works with that data and has no way to change the data that was passed in. The other option is you specify an out mode that basically says the procedure can set the value. It can put a value into this parameter, but it's not allowed to read from the um, parameter ever. It's only a write out. This is where you're meant to stick results from the start procedure. And then lastly, there is also the in out parameter, which allows you to both read the variable from within the start procedure as well as change and write to it for output purposes. So let's give an example where we start using some of these um, different parameters to specify um, passing in or getting information from stored procedures. So here is a, another stored procedure. Once again, this is in MySQL. I use the same delimiter pattern. I say create procedure, get top 10. And so my goal is to do some sort of process that works through the database. And I'm specifying that this has one argument, an in argument, meaning that it ex will not be able to change this variable and it will work with a copy of the data that's passed in. The variable is called section desired, or the argument is called section desired. And what do I do in this procedure? Well, the first thing is, is I update students and add an exclamation point to the end of every student's name. I don't know why, just as an example of a SQL statement. And I only do that in the case where students are in a particular section of my class. All right. And then I end my stored procedure, and I end my semicolon, and then I call this stored procedure get top 10 1. All right, so what does that one do? Well, that one is the parameter that's passed in, and it specifies which section am I manipulating. Um, and so if I passed in a two, then it would do this um, update on the students in section two instead of the students in section one. And if this was some complicated query, 
this can be a lot safer to use than just trying to retype this complicated query each time. Okay, so that's with the in parameter. Here's an example with the out parameter. So I have another parameter, and I, just to show that there's nothing magical about that first line, I could make my end delimiter be exclamation, two exclamation points. And so then I say get uh, create procedure, get best, out best student. And once again, the types in my SQL are a little bit different. Var character basically means my text would be 255 characters at most in length. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to learn my SQLs. Um, uh, types for any reason in this class. And so then I have my query or queries. Here I say select name into best student from students order by grade limit one. So this is a query that will find the student with the highest grade and stick their name into best student. And so then I say um, end exclamation exclamation point and I set the delimiter back to a semicolon and then I call it and I say get best and then I say, I pass in the variable, at best. Um, and presumably before this, I declared the variable um, at best for this purpose. And then I say, select at best so that I can actually see what the variable is, which I haven't actually talked about. How do you actually look at a variable? Well, you can just select it directly like it was a column in a table. And I don't know, I'm always the best student in all of my classes, so it returns my own name. All right, and then lastly, just for completion, we'll do another one, this time using an in-out parameter, actually, as well as an in parameter. So I'm going to create a procedure called increment. All right, now what does this guy do? Well, it takes two arguments, a tally and an ink. And what does it do? Well, it sets tally equal to tally plus ink. All right, uh, kind of a, a stupid um, um, function because it's not actually even touching any tables or any of the larger database. But it, once again, it demonstrates the idea here. And so how do you use a function like this? Well, the very first thing you do is because one of the arguments is an in-out argument, you have to set count equal to zero, and then you have to call increment with both with two arguments. One of them has to be a, a, a variable that it can write to, and the other one has to be just a variable that needs to be able to read from. Three is a perfectly acceptable input for any of these functions. And so if I run this, it will return the number three because really this is a big fancy way to say, hey, add the first number and the second number and change the first number to be that value. All right, so why would you ever use stored procedures? Well, the primary reason is that stored procedures are compiled and stored, hence their name, in the database. This allows for caching. The database knows the source of queries they work and can make sure to optimize its performance to make those queries quick. And so it allows for faster performance, especially if you call the stored procedure more than once. It allows the database to learn the best way to and the fastest way to implement these sorts of functions, as opposed to just always getting, this is a query I've never seen before. Another nice thing, which it matters a lot less now, but it mattered a lot more early on, is that this involves a lot less traffic. If you store the stored procedure on the database once, then the only message you ever need to send to the database is, hey, run this stored procedure. And if that stored procedure is many hundreds of queries long, being able to just say, hey, run that function is a lot quicker um, to communicate with the database. And that matters, especially when you have thousands of messages to the database each second. The another nice thing is that they're reusable. So um, different clients, different applications can all use the same stored procedures instead of having to rewrite those queries from scratch. And lastly, they're a lot more secure than queries because what you can do is you can basically say, hey, who has permission to run this stored procedure? And so as long as you write the stored procedure well, you can say, hey, you know, this stored procedure is able to manipulate the database, but it manipulates the database in a very safe way. This is a way that will allow you know, um, particular users that we may not trust as much to change the database. We don't want them to have full read and write permission on the database, but we have the ability for them to you know, add a comment to the database in a way that's tracked and it's undoable if they did something wrong. However, there's a lot of disadvantage to stored procedures as well. One of the big ones is they add a lot of memory and CPU to every connection to the database because every connection needs to store its own stored procedures and it needs to be able to access what are all of the available um, resources that it can use. 
So stored procedures actually make each connection a bit more heavyweight, which means that databases can support as many separate connections if they have stored procedure functionality available. Another probably more important reason is that these things are a pain to debug. The problem is, is that unlike many programming languages, if something goes wrong, it's really hard to tell how and why. There's not really um, exceptions in stored procedures. There's not good um, ways to figure out what part went wrong, especially when stored procedures are calling stored procedures. And kind of connected to the first one is these things are really difficult to maintain. Like triggers, which I'll talk about in a little bit, stored procedures are really difficult to read, they're really difficult to write, and if your database structure changes, if you change the names of tables, move things around, change the way columns are laid out, all of these things shatter, and sometimes you don't know that they're broken until you try to run them, or even not even then, um, because of the terrible error reporting. All right, so multiple choice question. How is a stored procedure different from a function? All right, so let's go through these. A, can a stored procedure return multiple values? I mean, return in the sense that it could set values in its arguments? Yeah, it can actually give you back multiple things, whereas just a normal function like the count function or the max function can only give you back one value. Stored procedures need the call keyword. That's definitely true. When you call normal functions, you just say count. But for stored procedures, you have to say call you know, count with parentheses. So if you forget the call word, you, the stored procedure won't work. Stored procedures can have multiple parameters. Well, that's very true, but functions can have multiple parameters. And then you might be going, wait, Josh, you haven't taught us about functions yet. Actually, that's what we'll cover next.